What's up guys, Jacob here. Today I'm talking about side chaining, specifically how to side chain an FL Studio. Let's go. So here's a track I've been working on. I think it's perfect for showing side chaining. It's a really simple track. Now, when we listen to it the first time, I'm not gonna have any side chaining going on. And I want you to really listen in close to the bass and the synth chords and the kick. All right, so what do we hear? You can hear the chord sustaining. It's just like a solid pad and the bass is doing the same thing. Now, when I apply side chaining, listen in to how the kick sounds. So that time, instead of hearing the synths and the bass just sustain, you heard the kick come in and bring them down in volume. And the reason why is because the kick is triggering compression in those other instruments, and that's the side chain. I've already got a channel in my mixer I've called Side Chain. You can rename it by secondary clicking and rename. I would recommend you do that throughout your whole mixer so you can stay organized. Now the first thing I need to do is make sure that that kick is being side chained to that track. So I'm gonna go to the arrow down here. Well, first I gotta make sure I have channel two selected. Then I'm gonna go to the arrow down here on the bottom of channel eight and secondary click and then click side chain to this track. So now you see this cable going to channel eight. Now I'm gonna route the base to channel eight, go to the arrow down here, secondary click, and now I'm gonna click route to this track. So now you see the cable going. I'm gonna to go to synth, same thing, route to this track, chords, and there we go. And now the last thing I need to do is go to the master, to the arrow down here. I have the side chain track selected, secondary click, route to this track. The next step is to add the Fruity Limiter plugin to our side chain channel. We'll disable the one that I already added and go to slot two and add in a new instance of Fruity Limiter, and there it is. First thing I'm gonna do is go to the compressor, go to side chain, secondary click, and select the kick. Then I'm gonna go to the threshold, bring that down a good bit, and then turn up the ratio. And when I play it back, pay attention to the graph. The white is the uncompressed audio, and the purple will show you the audio that's being compressed by that kick. So check it out. Now, if I were to take that side chaining away, it would sound like this. We're getting some distortion. It's because the bass and the kick are in similar frequencies. They're competing for space. So part of the beauty of side chaining is I'm giving the kick a moment to pop through and have its spot in the mix so that I don't get that awful sound. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to play with is the release knob. And release is very important, especially because this pumping effect with side chaining in this style of music, the rhythm of it is very important. It's not just the amount you're compressing, but about when that compressor lets go, when it releases. Okay, so what did we hear there? If I have a really low release time and I make it too low, you start hearing distortion because it's releasing so fast that those frequencies are starting to collide again between the, the kick and the bass and there's too much level going on, so you're hearing some clipping. If I go to the middle, somewhere in the middle, it was kind of a, a sweet spot where I was getting a nice rhythmic flow between the attack, between the kick, and the sustained sound of the other instruments coming in after compression was being let go. If I turn the release up too much, it just compresses everything because the compressor is never letting go. Within the envelope of the compressor, you also have attack and sustain. Let me play it back and show you what the attack will do to the sound. So that was a little bit more of a subtle one to hear, but you could hear when I had the attack all the way up, so it was a really it took a really long time for the compressor to act. You started hearing the kick and the bass competing again, and that's where you got some distortion. So generally you don't need to worry about the attack too much as long as you have it pretty quick. Now with sustain, that's a little bit similar to release in that it's affecting the volume and the recovery of the instruments that we're compressing. So if I have sustain all the way down. <laughs> 
it's all released. But if I put it up to about 12 o'clock, here it's changing the rhythm of it. Before it was really like a boom, bop, boom, bop, boom, bop. Now it's like a boom, bop, boom, bop, boom, bop, boom. And you can see it. The white peak is the sound coming back in. It's smaller than when I had the sustain more in this range. But again, kind of like the release, if I turn the sustain all the way up, we're not hearing those instruments come back at all after the compression. So it's all kick. We're not hearing those other instruments at all. Another thing you want to keep in mind is the level of each instrument you're sending into your sidechain channel. You can control that with the knob that appears whenever you route it to a channel. So this is controlling how much bass I'm sending in. This would be zero and then all the way up. Let me play the track back and show you what that would sound like. When I added too much bass, it started to distort and that's just a level thing. You just have to be careful. A lot of times when you're doing this, you might actually want to start all the way down and then gradually start adding level in and then add as much as what sounds good to you. This really gets into the mixing process and just comes down to your ears determining what's a good balance for those instruments. All right, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see any other FL content, please let me know below. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this or go to Sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.